This video will explain the Enhanced Poet algorithm from researchers at Uber AI Labs. In a similar way that Mu0 removes priors in AlphaGo and Alpha0 that makes the algorithm more useful for broader reinforcement learning problems, Enhanced Poet extends the original Poet algorithm to be broadly applicable outside the context of bipedal walking agents. Direct optimization, where you have an initial set of parameters and a loss function, tends to converge to the same solution or it may never reach the objective at all because it is too ambitiously designed. An example of this could be taking a robot and asking it to make a salad. Direct optimization would likely be too ambitious for this task. Therefore, researchers may design manual stepping stones, such as first learning to pick up a bowl, then chopping the lettuce, and so on. Quality diversity algorithms embeds the search of these stepping stones that makes the overall optimization problem more tractable into the optimization loop, designing a co-evolutionary framework of learning the agents and the environments that they learn in or the tasks that they're trying to learn. This video will explain the new additions to one of the most interesting and powerful algorithms in artificial intelligence. This video will explain the enhanced poet algorithm from Uber AI Labs. This is one of the most exciting algorithms in artificial intelligence research, describing a co-evolution between the learning agents and the environments they learn in. Poet and the Enhanced Poet algorithm are classes of quality diversity algorithms. This set of algorithms tries to optimize to have a diverse set of solutions as well as an optimized solution. So usually when you have these optimization objectives, it gets too uh, convergent on a single behavior to try to optimize according to that loss function. So the idea here is to have a diverse set of different solutions to the given optimization problem. And this class of algorithms is known as quality diversity algorithms. So if you have an ambitious optimization problem, like having a robot with a robotic arm and robotic hands and asking it to make you a salad, that kind of direct optimization is likely to be too ambitious and the robot is never going to be able to learn that task. So you might invent manual stepping stones, like learn to pick up the bowl, learn to chop the lettuce, and these miscellaneous manually designed stepping stones. But quality diversity algorithms try to just explore all the different stepping stones that are possible, leading to eventual complex behaviors just by trying to be different and diverse with respect to the evolution of the different behaviors that the robot would learn as it interfaces with this kitchen, trying to eventually learn to make a salad. So some other interesting areas of co-evolution include things like self-play, like in the um, uh, different papers like the Alpha Star, these different algorithms where you play against different versions of the algorithm, or the generative adversarial network framework where the generator has this uh, natural curriculum that uh, arises with the training of the discriminator, and the discriminator similarly has this co-evolution with the generator as they're both kind of learning together. It's also similar to algorithms like curriculum learning, like goal generation, intrinsic motivation, uh, teacher-student curriculum learning, or procedural content generation. These kind of ideas of trying to formulate a way to design these stepping stones for learning agents to go from simple behaviors to more complex uh, tasks. The POET algorithm is one of the most interesting co-evolutionary algorithms tested in the set of a bipedal walking agent evolving the parameters that control from the 24 inputs, which are a combination of different positions of the joints of the robot, as well as the sensors from a LiDAR sensor that helps the robot detect uh, like nearby obstacles or nearby just the nearby surrounding of it. So it maps from those 24 inputs to, through two layers of neural network representations, probably something like a ReLU or 10H activation at the end of each of the uh, activations, and then into these four outputs, which are the forces to apply to the hip and knee joints of the left and right leg. So those are the agents that are uh, being optimized with the theta weights that control that mapping from the 24 inputs into the four outputs. So this is a population-based algorithm, meaning that there's a population of these agents, a population of different uh, theta parameters that control this mapping from input to output. So as the agents are learning to optimize their parameters through this evolutionary search, they are, have these environments that they are being tested in. So the environments contain these different uh, like walking surfaces that are parameterized by things like uh, the height of the stumps, ditches, the frequency of them, how like rough or smooth the grass is. And so these environments are evolving as well as the agent. So the way that POET handles evolving uh, agents and environments is that when you have a new environment, if a given agent is better at that new environment than the environment is currently trying to optimize on, then it's just gonna switch over to that new environment. So this kind of evolution of goal switching from environment to environment, because the agent is doing better on this new environment in terms of the uh, performance of how much distance it can cover when walking along this new environment, this is how these new environments sort of uh, co-evolve with the agent's parameters as well. At the end of the POET evolution, we have these complex environments the bipedal walking agents are able to walk on and get good optimization scores by walking along these terrains, subject to the theta parameters that the agent has to navigate these new environments. 
So similar to the example of having a robot and asking it to make a salad from scratch, these intermediate stepping stones discovered by the poet algorithm, these, each of these diverse environments that it learns to walk on before it tries to take on these more complex environments is necessary to learn these really complex behaviors. So one of the key findings of poet is that if you take this really complex environment that arises out of the poet's search, and then you try to just train a set of a population of these parameters to learn to walk in that environment from scratch, it won't be able to achieve the same performance as the poet algorithm. And in this paper, Enhanced Poet, we're going to see this even further generalized, such that this kind of algorithm not only works for bipedal walking agents, but really any class of machine learning problems in general. There are four major changes in the Enhanced Poet algorithm. The first of which is the PATAEC, the Performance of All Transferred Agents Environment Characterization. So in the POET algorithm, we have these environments that are defined by these parameters that render this environment based on how uh, rough the terrain is, how deep the ditches are, maybe how frequent they are, or how tall and frequent these obstacles are. So that kind of uh, characterization of environments doesn't really transfer well outside of the bipedal walking environment because it's very domain specific. So the idea here is to have a more general representation of characterizing the environments for the sake of saying if this environment is different from this next environment or how you parameterize the environments to encode them, which we'll see in the third uh, enhancement in the uh, CPPN encoding of the environments. So in this way, the performance of all transfer agents is this idea that when you form a new environment, the difference of it or how it's going to be measured is going to be based on whether it re-ranks how well the agent population performs on that. So say you have a, a current environment and you have this rank order of how well each of the agents are performing in that environment. If a new environment uh, significantly changes that rank order, such that say maybe the fourth best performing agent is now the first best and the first best is now uh, like the 25th best or something like that, that's gonna be a new environment. So this is how we're gonna compare environments to each other is based on how they uh, perturb the rank order of the current agents. So the next uh, major change is the transfer algorithm. So when you take an agent and now you assign it to a new environment, how much are you going to fine tune that agent on the new environment? So the idea here is to introduce this threshold, which basically says how much further fine tuning you're going to do on the agent. So you don't waste computation on agents that uh, don't exceed this threshold or don't need too much fine tuning or this kind of, uh, you know, kind of a relationship. So the third major change is the way that these environments are encoding. So this is called a compositional pattern producing network. So it's similar to the uh, neat algorithm, neuroevolution of augmenting topologies, which is this way of evolving these more complex patterns between an initial node and then how it develops uh, new nodes and new connections from uh, the current function to, towards the output. We're going to get more into the details of exactly how that works later in the presentation. And the fourth of which is a measure of progress in order to have some way of comparing these open-ended algorithms to one another. In a similar way that alpha zero and mu zero remove restrictions on the alpha go algorithm to make it more generally applicable, the PATAC, performance of all transferred agents environment characterization, makes this poet algorithm more general to more machine learning problems. So as described in this quote in the paper, if a genuinely domain general approach to measuring environmental novelty could be formalized, as this paper attempts to do, it would open poet to a broad application across almost any conceivable domain with little impediment. So the idea here is to have a way of comparing environments that isn't domain specific, such as just comparing the, uh, these different parameters that are kind of like heuristically driven, like the roughness of the terrain, the number of obstacles, the height of the obstacles, the ditches, and these previous ways that are used to describe uh, these different bipedal walking agent environments. The idea behind the PATA EC extension to the POET algorithm is that novel environments are those that provide new information about the, how the behaviors of agents within them differ, and novel challenges should make novel distinctions among agents in the system. So the idea is that as you evolve a new environment, because remembering that this is a simultaneous co-evolution of the environment parameters that are encoded in these CPPNs, which we'll get into more later, and the uh, theta parameters that do the input to output mapping of the walking agents that let them navigate in these environments. So as a new environment is evolved, what we do is we evaluate the performance on each of the agents, and then we see if this new rank order is changing with respect to the new environments, and that's how we're gonna determine that this is a new environment that deserves to be added into the current population. More specifically, the pseudocode behind implementing the PATA EC algorithm is to first evaluate all agents in the new environment and store their new scores in a raw vector, then clip these scores in the vector between a lower and upper bound to prevent extreme cases of high and low scores, and then normalize the scores of these rankings such that you can use Euclidean distance to compare these different ranking vectors between environments. 
So we can now measure and reward environmental novelty completely independent of any domain specific information. So what's really important about this is that it opens up POA to almost any conceivable domain because there's no domain specific information that's used to compare agent performance in each environment or each task or whatever kind of way you're formalizing these problems. The next extension in the enhanced POET algorithm is to improve the way that you transfer agents into new environments to reduce computational costs. So initially when you take the agent into the new uh, environment, you compute the direct transfer order. You just drop this agent in the new environment and then you get the score that it achieves in the new environment. So if that score exceeds this threshold, then you're gonna do some fine tuning of that agent where you further fine tune the theta weights that control that input output mapping that thus control the score in the environment. So then that further improves the threshold and then if it exceeds this threshold, you add it to the candidate set. The next key distinction between the enhanced POET algorithm and the original POET paper is the way that you encode these environments that the bipedal walking agent is gonna be walking in. So these environments are encoded with these CPPN, compositional pattern producing networks. So the way that this works is these uh, different functions that alter the X value as you uh, traverse along the X, which makes up the environment. And you're basically, so the Y, the height of the terrain is a function of the X value at the current spot. So then the CPPN, it encodes this uh, augmenting topology. It's a algorithm called NEAT, Neuroevolution of Augmenting Topologies, which is this way of adding new nodes to the structure and then thus evolving these complex architectures that uh, map X to Y or X, Y to the output pattern in this paper that originally presents the CPPN networks. So these CPPN networks, they have functions like cosine, sine, uh, absolute value, you know, all these different functions that can uh, make combinations of the X and Y. So they also have different weights. You can just uh, learn more about this in uh, the NEAT paper, Neuroevolution of Augmenting Topologies. I've also made a video explaining that paper if you're interested. But basically the idea is to uh, incrementally add these nodes to the environment that you know render it in this way. So the CPPN encodes the resulting environment by encoding the way that the height of the terrain is a function of as X goes through this, uh, you know, this transformation architecture to produce the height of the terrain. These diagrams further illustrate how the CPPN environment encoding space is different in the enhanced POET compared to the original POET algorithm. So in the original POET, they have these, uh, these handcrafted different features that make up the rendered environment, such as the frequency of these ditches, sort of the depth of them, the smoothness, roughness of the terrain, or these little obstacles that it has to kind of like jump over or, you know, arc its back, uh, arc back and then put the front leg over it to kind of run along this terrain. So you see the difference between the POET terrains and then the CPPN encoded environments. So in this case, there's just the Y as a function of the X, and they're composed in these really uh, complicated uh, encoding functions. So it could be something like, uh, you know, being transformed as X goes through like cosine, sine, all these different routing paths in this uh, augmenting topology that is evolved as it learns the different environments in the coevolution of agents and environments. So the environments are all encoded by this CPPN mapping from X to Y. This image further shows examples of environments that can be rendered with the CPPN encoding that maps from the X to the height of the terrain or the Y. Another interesting characteristic of using the CPPN network to encode these environmental encodings is that you have this phylogenetic tree that shows how the evolved environments throughout the running of the course of simultaneously evolving these environments and the agents that run in them and how these environments differ from each other throughout the evolution. So you can directly compare sort of the uh, topologies that are mapping from X to Y and sort of these uh, different activation functions and different weights that transform X to Y into the intermediate activation functions. The next key distinction between the enhanced POET algorithm is the annex metric for uh, having some kind of automated metric for or quantitative metric for assigning the way that these systems are continuing to generate interesting new things in diversity algorithms, these quality diversity algorithms. So the idea here is that you track the accumulated number of novel environments created and solved along the uh, intuition that measuring progress can be based on the idea that if an existing set of agents are able to solve all of the new challenges generated by a system in the future, then the system has not generated any meaningfully new challenges. So the idea here is that how many times does this system produce some new environment that initially maybe you know the agents cannot solve it, although it does change the rank order of how the agents perform in it, and then how well does it then learn to solve that agent? So simultaneously uh, measuring how diverse these environments are because they're a new environment created, and then how well you're able to evolve the agent, so the solved part of this. So how well the uh, theta parameters can then adapt to you know, solve these new environments. The first set of experiments are comparing the POET with the enhanced POET algorithm on the basis of these environments that are described as challenging, moderately challenging, or very challenging, based on these heuristics that describe these environments like the maximum stump height, gap width, or roughness, but that are then adapted for the sake of this new CPPN encoding of the environment, such that you can compare 
the, uh, these kind of heuristic measures of challenging to these new environments. The first experiment tests how well this new metric of characterizing environments, the performance of all transferred agents metric, is able to uh, find new diversity in this co-evolution of agents environments. So in this case, they find that it requires about 82.4% more computation, but the key difference here is that the original algorithm is hand-designed or domain-specifically tuned, such that you'd expect it to be able to find more diverse solutions uh, faster, or at least reach this distribution of extremely challenging, very challenging, and challenging, that you're looking to benchmark how quickly they reach this distribution of environments in the co-evolution process. So, but it's more interesting because the PATAEC environment, our uh, way of characterizing environments, is more general and uh, applicable for problems outside of bipedal walking agents. The next experiment comparing POET and enhanced POET tests out the uh, computation reductions with this transfer algorithm where you have to exceed a certain threshold before you do further fine tuning. So you see without any fine tuning, it takes a longer time to reach the distribution of extremely challenging, very challenging, and challenging environments. So with this new algorithm of improved transfer, you reach the same level of diversity, this distribution that you're kind of uh, benchmarking, this, benchmarking the race to get to this distribution of environment challenge, and you can do this with only 80% of the computation. Deploying all the advancements in the enhanced POET algorithm, you see the difference between the NX metric that is scoring the number of these uh, novel environments and the solutions in these novel environments to the original POET and the new enhanced POET algorithm. So the key here is that the compositional pattern producing networks are able to encode more diversity and such that it's a more open-ended algorithm and it's able to discover more over time as the POET algorithm eventually saturates off and isn't able to discover new environments due to the hand coding heuristics features that are used to render the environments. So also the authors note that as it, it looks like this uh, graph is starting to plateau out and saturate as you imagine sort of extrapolating it to this region. But they uh, note that the slower growth in this metric is a result of the environments becoming increasingly difficult. So the challenge here is that now it's taking the agents longer to be optimized in these new uh, really complex environments that are being encoded by the CPMs, CPPNs, not that they are uh, running out of ways to innovate environments. Linking all the way back to the analogy of having a robot and asking it to make a salad from scratch, the question is, can evolutionary strategies or proximal policy optimization agents solve these environments that are eventually discovered in the environment agent co-evolution with the enhanced POET algorithm? And the answer to this is no. This is the chart showing uh, the early stage environments that the uh, proximal policy optimization and evolutionary strategies optimization can learn agents in. But as you get to the middle stage environments and the late stage environments, these kind of uh, optimization algorithms, whether it's evolutionary optimization or the uh, policy gradient style, can't produce these agents that can perform on these environments. That the co-evolution, which is having this uh, automatic way of searching for these stepping stones that leads to these really complex behaviors, is able to perform. So it's a really interesting chart showing sort of the high-level idea of why everyone researching artificial intelligence should be interested in these kind of algorithms. I think this algorithm of the enhanced poet is also really interesting within the context of another paper from this research lab, Generative Teaching Networks. In Generative Teaching Networks, they're searching to design a data set that helps a classification network learn to classify CIFAR-10 uh, test set or MNIST test set images as fast as possible. So I think it's really interesting to think about this idea as the image data sets being the environments and then the uh, classifiers being the agents or some kind of extension like that to the framework that you might imagine would, will arise eventually out of this research lab and the studies that they're performing. I also think it's interesting to think about another recent paper, uh, learning to continually learn from a lot of members of this group. So in this, they have this uh, strategy, this meta-learning strategy of learning how to learn many sequential tasks without this problem of catastrophic forgetting. So if you're interested in relating enhanced POET to generative teaching networks or learning to continually learn, I'd be really interested in hearing your thoughts on this in the comment section of this video. Thanks for watching this video on the enhanced POET algorithm, extensions to the original POET framework that make it more generally applicable to more problems outside of the bipedal walking agent, and also introducing this really interesting encoding scheme to render these more diverse environments and enable more open-ended exploration of this quality diversity algorithm. It's also really interesting this improved transfer algorithm to reduce computation, as well as this new metric for evaluating these kind of open-ended systems. I think this is one of the most interesting algorithms in artificial intelligence research, and I'm really excited to see where these kind of studies go. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos.